What time is it? Oh, I gotta record today. Nah, I got time for one more. Yes, sir, I am in complete control of my own procrasta. What's up, guys? I'm Chill Pills Subconscious, and welcome back to another Black Sheep Review. It would seem that a certain sheepy's gotten a little too sleepy and is incapacitated at the mo, so I'm here to pick up the slack and do the review for him. You know, since all of his good ideas for these videos come from me anyways. And we're doing it completely from inside his mind. Woo! It's not scary. Which just so happens to look exactly like Chill Pills Game Room in reality. But no. No, I say. It's actually a very different place. See, we got this cool little effect going on here. It's, it's kind of neat. Anyways, Figment, a game by Bedtime Digital Games, also happens to take place inside the brain of a man in a coma, and explores the more creative aspects of the human mind. Question is, was Figment in its right state of mind, or will it leave you feeling brain dead? Let's find out! The human brain, an intriguing ball of squishy gray matter nestled neatly between our ears that allows us to feel love, solve a complex calculus problem, or remember our dog's birthday. But what exactly is it? Neuroscientists and medical professionals would have us believe it's a complex organ comprised of nerve cells that is completely vital for normal bodily functions that allow us to live from day to day. What do they know? Television says that my brain is a place where tiny creatures control my every thought and movement like I was some sort of fleshy Gundam. And when has television ever steered us wrong? Never! And the devs at Bedtime Digital Games totally understood this. Their game, Figment, takes place in the mind of a man that recently slipped into a coma after getting into a traumatic car crash. If that wasn't bad enough, the violent jarring of his brain knocked loose a few of his repressed fears and it's up to the man's courage, a grumpy little dude named Dusty, to stop them all from wreaking havoc on the subconscious and wake the man from his vegetative state. That's quite the heavy task for someone who dresses like the kid from Where the Wild Things Are and his sidekick, Toucan Samantha. But don't worry. They totes got this. I definitely enjoyed the layered approach towards storytelling in the game, but honestly, the plot wouldn't have been nearly as engaging if it wasn't for the interesting cast of characters that occupy the man's mind, most notably the dynamic duo that is Dusty and Piper. One's an impossibly sweet optimist that can only see the good in everyone and everything, and the other is a stick in the mud that wants nothing more than to sit alone on the front porch and get wasted while reminiscing about years past. And when you get them together, hold on to your sides, because here comes some Class A banter. Whatever, turkey tits. Tits are dusty. Nah, but seriously, their contrasting personalities make for some of the most interesting dialogue in the game, and seeing them grow as friends throughout their adventure was really cute. Not to mention that they were easily the best voice acted characters as well. I mean, the nightmares were okay, but some of the NPCs you talk to sound very... ...interesting. Like, some of these guys just really, really go for it. And then there's this articulate fellow. Boy, you can sure say that again, dude. But you know, these overzealous attempts at voice acting actually kind of work for the game and add positively to its overall charm. I mean, in a world as zany and vibrant as this one, you wouldn't expect every character to speak to you all prim and proper. Well, at least not in the right side of the brain. Those left-brainers are just so boring and stuck up, am I right? Figment's art style is probably its most striking feature. The bright colors and exaggerated designs of this hand-drawn world sell the concept of whimsical fantasy land almost instantly. It's as if the devs took bits from a Dr. Seuss book and pieces from a Tim Burton movie, mashed them together, and the resulting love child was this game. I particularly like how each of the different areas of the mind are represented in Figment. 
The right side, aka the creative side, is very surreal with its instrument plants and use of curved organic lines everywhere. The left side, aka the logical side, is a lot more geometric and utilizes gears and clocks as set pieces. Finally, the pathways, aka the conscious mind, is comprised of things that are most prevalent to the man's comatose mind and is littered with objects that represent the terrible monotonies of adulthood. Hashtag same bro. Similar to the world design, the creatures that inhabit the mind also seem as though they were heavily inspired by other fictional characters. I had previously mentioned how our hero Dusty looks like Max from Where the Wild Things are, but you also have General Grievous, that spider from James and the Giant Peach, and most horrific of all, Steve Buscemi. Ugh, now I can see why they're called the Nightmares. It's clear to see where the majority of the effort went in designing the characters because the regular enemies you fight throughout the game are pretty lackluster, if I'm being honest. You'll be facing off against spiders, tentacle monsters, and these diarrhea-vomiting weasel rats, and they all have harder versions of themselves that suffer from a bad case of palette swap-itis. If you watched our Rogue Legacy review, you'll know I'm not exactly the biggest fan when it comes to recycling enemies in this fashion, but this game is so short, eh, I'll give it a pass. Overall, though, I'd have to say that the devs did a fantastic job with bringing this quite literally imaginative world to life, and the high quality of the hand-drawn art made Figment one of the most visually unique and stylized indies I've played all year. I'll be the first to admit, I am an absolute sucker for games that utilize live instruments in their soundtracks. Synthesized music tends to make me more conscious of the fact that I'm playing a video game, but when I hear a score that's performed by actual musicians and instruments, it makes the whole game experience feel so much more organic and cinematic. Probably because I'm a master musician myself. Overall, I'd say the Figment soundtrack is pretty chill. Nothing all that fast-paced or frantic, just some nice relaxing music to listen to as you adventure through the brain of a coma patient. <sighs> so pleasant. The song that plays in the Freedom Isles is very serene and gentle. While Clockwork Town is more metronomic and mechanical. And what's really cool is that the music will play a variation of itself whenever you stand near certain objects in the environment. This game's soundtrack and sound effects are pretty dang solid in my opinion, but then it goes and does something that I didn't quite expect. Something that differentiates itself from most video game soundtracks. This game is actually... A musical. What? Yeah, this game goes full on Disney and gives everyone their own song. Except Dusty. Poor Dusty. There's the spider song. The Fear of Loss song. Throw up your hands in sadness and lose yourself in the madness. And we can't forget about the plague. Oh, Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. His song is probably my least favorite. Not only is his voice like scraping a chalkboard across a second chalkboard, but his song also has some very stirring lyrical choices. I got a vaccine for just like you! For love, autism, nausea, and flu! Vaccines and autism. No, I'm not touching that. This tiny misstep aside, the Nightmare songs were definitely the most memorable aspect of the game's soundtrack, and I certainly appreciate the devs trying to go above and beyond with the music in Figment. And if for some reason you absolutely hate the music in the game, you can take out your frustration by beating the crap out of some of these musical plants. I myself only do it because I enjoy being a pain in the brass. While I found Figment's music and art direction to be inspired, the gameplay seemed to, ironically, lack imagination for the most part. It may have been in my head, well, technically our coma patient's head, but it seemed like the gameplay borrowed heavily from other games. The entire time I was playing, all I could think is, ooh, these isometric views with a world that pieces itself together is just like Bastion. Or, huh, these puzzles and sword mechanics feel just like a Zelda game. This isn't necessarily a bad thing per se, it just seems like a game that focuses on the human mind and imagination could have taken a few more creative risks with gameplay so that it didn't feel like your average adventure game. 
However, I will say that the devs did a good job in making sure that the game's puzzles never felt overused. Basically, every area of the brain is unique. The right brain has puzzles involving mirrors and music, the left brain has tried and true box pushing challenges, and the pathways has these weird turtle pyramid thingies that you push along to protect you from the waves of sadness flying at your face. Thanks, turtle lamppost bro. I also appreciated the game's indirect approach towards its boss fights. Rather than having Dusty wail on some monster butt with his trusty 2x4, you instead have to solve a puzzle to put those nightmares to rest. Although not particularly challenging, if you can avoid the exploding turd vials that is, these boss fights definitely add to Figment's overall charm in a positive way. The same can't be said about the typical enemies you fight throughout the game though. You can play Whack the Weasel or Smack the Spider with Dusty's wooden sword and a very limited moveset that includes the obligatory Link spin attack, and it ended up getting fairly dull fairly quickly. Not to mention, the sound the weasels make when they appear is god-awful. The only reason you would want to spend time fighting these things is because of that sweet, sweet endorphin release. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Give me all the endorphins. These little white balls of pure happiness are the main thing you'll be collecting on your journey, and once you gather enough of them, your health bar increases. And how does Dusty heal if he gets hurt, you might ask? Easy. Smack an endurance neuron tree, of course. Actually, Piper, endurance neurons is a bit of a misnomer. You see, neurons are considered the basic building blocks of our nervous system, and these cells we release neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and serotonin, to elicit various responses in our bodies. Since these endurance neurons, as you call them, exist purely to heal Dusty, and don't actually make up the world the game takes place in, it can be argued that they are more akin to these neurotransmitters than they are neurons. And if we take a look at figure number three, you can see I am indeed very lonely. Other than these green and white balls, you won't be collecting much else. Well, there's the remembering too, but more on that later. There are no new weapons or special abilities to acquire. Figment just keeps to the basics for gameplay, which I guess is fine for what the game is, but I sure wouldn't mind some changes here or there. From a purely artistic standpoint, there are so many things Figment does right. The vibrant color scheme, whimsical characters, and cheerful music make it nearly impossible to play this game without a grin on your face. What's more, there are so many little details the devs threw in that give their game a nice coat of polish. The staircases you climb are made out of pencils. As you cross a bridge, the individual bricks depress under Dusty's weight. Some of the clouds in the background are held up with string. These seemingly insignificant minutia come together in a way that makes the world of Figment feel truly unique and inspired. I just wish some of that inspiration could have bled over into the gameplay side of things a bit. I had a lot of fun with the musical boss fights, and the puzzles were okay too, I guess, but dang did regular combat get repetitive and boring. As much as I like to bludgeon packs of roving vomit weasels to death, I just didn't enjoy this part of the game. There wasn't too much that made me want to continue playing after the credits rolled either. The game introduces you to these big red balls of nostalgia called Remembrane pretty early on, which will unlock forgotten memories in the comatose man's life. Lots of balls in this game now that I'm thinking about it. And you can continue playing after finishing the game to collect the ones you missed, but I didn't really see a point, besides decking out this tree with our member berries, I guess. But overall, Figment's charming storybook aesthetic had me absolutely engrossed from beginning to end. Exploring the mind with Dusty and Piper and seeing the dev's creative take on the inner workings of the human mind was tons of fun, and the fantastic music and art direction outweigh any qualms I have with this truly memorable game. I had a lot of fun playing through Figment. Although the gameplay was rather lackluster and there wasn't much in terms of replayability, the creative characters, Susian style level design, and innovative incorporation of music made this brain game totally unforgettable. That's why this game gets my rating of Remarkable. So, until next time, guys, I'm Chill Pills Subconscious reminding you to wake up! You're gonna be makeup! Oh, where am I? What day is it?
I guess it was just a dream. But wait, if it was just a dream, how do I explain this lab code? I guess I don't really care. Hey guys, thanks for checking out our review on Figment. Did we absolutely blow your mind with how amazing it was? Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Black Sheep Vigia to keep up to date with our sheepy antics. Question for y'all, if you had little creatures running the show in your head, what do you think they'd look like? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.